All right, guys, it's time for more drama. Season three, episode one of Razor Divide fans from Mr. Jake himself. Let's see what he has to say. ReZero Season 3 Episode 1 is now officially out, uh -oh. and ReZero fans are finally getting to feast on the 90 minute long feature oh, yes. length episode. 90 minute a movie However, length. Based on comments from ReZero fans, there's a lot of division mm. over whether or not ReZero has let them down. I think that the main point of the drama is probably due to Crunchyroll's shitty subtitles, which just butchered Subaru's characterization, where he says, like, he's blaming... Uh, it, it sounds like he's being egotistical and saying, I have to suffer again, but it meant for other people. There are some scenes like that, and that's just one example of it. Another example could be Liliana's censorship, and what that pertains to companies and moving forward about how... Again, it's just not the Lolicon fan service that I care about. None of that shit matters. When titties and asses get censored, it's not about that. It's about the precedence that it sets and what potential censorship could happen in the future. And then another thing could be... Maybe there's some people screeching about um, art style, which I highly doubt. But most likely how the average monkey watching this cannot sit down through 90 minutes of exposition and setup, and they just wanted Oonga Boonga hype. That's what I think is happening. There's a lot of disagreement about the hype. And... In this video, I'm going to talk about the episode and I'm going Let's to go. be talking about why ReZero fans are arguing over the first episode. One of the first things that people noticed was of course the time skip, with some individuals pointing mm. out how the characters' relationships don't seem to have changed after all. <laughs> Hello? Subaru and Biko's relationship has significantly changed. Have you not seen the amount of affection there is for each other? Emilia and Subaru are also seemingly more closer than ever as the baby joke that happened when Yoshiwa was in the room. She was completely fine with it. Also, Garfield, Subaru, the boy, just hanging out. What do you mean it doesn't change? It's so much has changed. Bro, it's been a year since season two. So why does it feel like everything is just the same? Where's the increase in the dynamic between certain characters? What happened to- Like, you genuinely have to be so stupid if you've watched the episode and you're, like, genuinely commenting this. This has to be rage bait. Subaru and Amelia's relationship. It doesn't seem like anything has developed, and so some fans are quite miffed at that. However, the biggest criticism for ReZero Season 3 Episode 1 was- Yeah, they did not care about the setup. Again, the average consumer cannot stomach setup exposition. That episode for me was so rich with world building, what's going on throughout the past year, and I still need cut content of what Priscilla did to get on the same cloud as Amelia. These monkeys don't care about the show ReZero. They just want hype fight scenes. They were promised that for season 3, so that's why they're just getting mad at that. Of course, the slice of life nature of the first episode, with many people believing that it was just fluff or filler or some sort of recap. It seems like fluff filler or recap to them because they're genuinely stupid and don't know that the world building is happening in front of them. They think that like Otto and Liliana talking about Subaru's legends traveling across the world is filler. How stupid is that, man? You have to be genuinely such a brain dead person to think that's filler recap. That's literally expanding the world and the expectations as the legend Natsuki Subaru's heroics are being accepted and what that means for future arcs. Are different nations getting ready to attack Lugunica because a potential Jesus Christ Messiah-like figure showing up just performing miracles in the country is unstable right now too. But don't, people don't care about this show enough to understand these things. It's a literal skill issue and a generation of monkeys that are glued to short form content and not, cannot appreciate this extensive world building. Many people actually discounting the first 70 to 80 minutes of the episode, just saying that it's worthless and that the episode only got good. It is worthless to them because no amount of exposition and setup and world building will ever mean anything to them. They just want to see hype fights or else it means nothing to them. And hey, that's the kind of audience you are. There's nothing wrong with it. It just kind of shows though, like the average consumer. I always want you guys to think about from the lens of the average consumer. One second. Because you guys are hyper fixated ReZero enthusiasts that's watching a dude react to another dude that's literally pulling off random tweets that probably didn't get much engagement to farm ReZero content. You guys are like a 0.00001% of ReZero enjoyers. So you will never be able to see from the lens of an average consumer. But me, 
doing content creation, trying to understand the different types of audiences, I can very see it through analytics, through statistics. And this is what the average monkey is. And you guys should try to really understand from a different perspective and things will start to make a lot more sense good in the final 10 minutes or so now this is something that i'm seeing everywhere this is not just localized this seems to be a common topic and a common talking point now obviously re-zero is about both the action true everyone was getting ready for this one right anytime slice of life happens a life's about to get sliced or multiple ending was insane pieces and the slice of life elements um so maybe these fans are more fans of shonen and so they don't really like it as much i don't know but i'm pretty sure you've all heard of people complaining about the slice of life nature of the first episode it's like because those slice of life moments exist it sets the stage it's the build-up if you're just trying to fucking nut without the foreplay then what's the point it's not fun you're stu like like do you know why a dog just inhales a fucking steak if it's given in front of them rather than chewing the food and digesting it and getting everything they can out of it? Because a dog is an animal. It does not have superior intellect. But you as a human being, you can override these animalistic instincts through rational thought, through problem solving, through using your fucking brain. And when I call you a monkey, I'm literally saying that you, as a human, cannot override this instinct. You are also inhaling the steak. But you would realize that if you had any sort of intellect, you would eat the fucking steak in the best way possible. Cook that medium rare with the nice fucking sear on both sides, preferably dry aged, and you eat it in bite-sized portions and you enjoy for all it got. But these people want to just inhale the steak. Because their brains are so fucking rotten, they are no different from a monkey. Moving into more positive aspects, I actually thought the episode was a lot better than I originally believed when I watched it several months ago when it was leaked. Of course, at the time, there was French subtitles, but now, of course, with the English translation... Which fucking sucks. <laughs> right? The French subtitles were probably better. We should have gotten like a, a chat GPT to just basically rewrite the French to English and I bet that translation would have been better than what Crunchyroll gave us. It's actually quite an amazing first episode. I actually don't think many other animes can even come close to reaching the animation quality. Mm. And not only that, the music was phenomenal. Kenichi Suedo, right? Oh my god, the soundtracks? They were so good and just setting up the different moods and the different conversations and dialogues and the super hype soundtracks has yet to play yet because obviously the battle hasn't happened. Just imagine what those are going to be like. The art is amazing. Pretty much it surpassed all expectations. There were several sections that I thought was really resonating with me. Um, so one of the mm. sections I really liked was, of course, Grandfather, the Subaru grandson? and Wilhelm Great scenario. Moment. I believe Tape stated that when fans saw Wilhelm in the cinema, they all like applauded, which mm. makes sense because Wilhelm was pivotal in the White Whale fight. Yes, and sir. And many people are interested in his character and his character arc. Many people were, of course, um, resonating with his backstory with Theresia Van Astria. And I actually do like Subaru and Wilhelm's relationship. Yeah, Subaru and Wilhelm's relationship was one of the most beautiful things. <laughs> the grandson that, you know, Reinhardt could never be. <laughs> I just love Wilhelm so much. And these scenes just makes me more, more believe that right, Wilhelm's probably going to die in this arc. Same with Mimi. Any character that's getting over characterization during the slice of life moments, it's not a good thing. Especially because Wilhelm is like a mentor-like character too. And on top of that, he already had a death flag that he surpassed back during the white whale subjugation it just feels like the fucking perfect target if i've seen a pattern of behavior of different characters dying from these kind of shows wilhelm is fucking number one on the list especially and watch him like the, the closure between reinhardt and his grandfather scene will probably during the last breathing moment for wilhelm something so fucking tragic subaru and wilhelm's relationship a lot so i really actually enjoyed this scene it actually meant a lot to me watching it and I'm already seeing it in my head. Wilhelm dies. Reinhardt pops off. Yup.
That moment will be fucking phenomenal. If that happens, well, Will Honda and then Reinhardt sees it and he just loses all composure and just goes fucking ballistic, bro. He could just solo everything, maybe. Seeing it in animated form. There were other scenes which were quite nice in the series. I like the relationship between Beatrice and Subaru. Of course, we're seeing their relationship for the first time when it's being animated. So it's actually kind of cute to see Beatrice act this way. Of course, anime onlys, and most of us know that Beatrice is sort of a sundere. She doesn't really... Sundere, guys. My favorite type. Actually, it's called Sundeer. Get close. She doesn't really get personal, but we can actually see how she's formed that attachment to Subaru over the course of this one year time skip. Exactly. How can you not like the first person saying there's no development changes? How crazy are you? These characters are so different in the way they interact with each other. Which is kind of weird because one of the criticisms were that mind boggling development has not been done over the one what? year time skip. But it's how? obvious to see how Beatrice has evolved as a character. Yep. And even characters like Felt. Felt! Felt also went through a huge development. She's no longer just a sewer rat girl that's always just like hot headed. Nah, man. She is literally so mature. She's rallied on all the like, you know, people ridden with poverty. Even her interactions with Reinhardt when Reinhardt was looking bad during that moment with Heinkel. Felt was like, nah. Reinhardt, keep your head up. Look proud and just stand there. I'll solve everything for you. It just goes to show how much Felt has matured. And I feel like she could be a ruler. In Reinhardt, you can see they're sort of doing this sort of uh, comedic straight man routine where Reinhardt is a straight man and Felt is like cracking these jokes and, you know, acting all emotional. But it's a good dynamic. Mm -hmm. Another good scene was, of course, Heinkel's introduction, which, of course, I feel like most people... It was a great scene, but I'm mad at him for just, you know, ruining the thing that Reinhardt and Wilhelm was going on. But still, just because a character is quote-unquote ruining a scene doesn't mean it's bad. In fact, it made the scene way more spicier. ...see Heinkel and dislike him for his mannerisms, but I do think Heinkel is similar to Wilhelm, where they're both just tragic characters. Maybe. And I do think Heinkel is actually one of the best written characters in ReZero. <laughs> a source reader has confirmed that Heinkel is going to be one of the best written characters, so you can already see how he's going to develop, huh? He shows up alcoholic, just ruining Thanksgiving's dinner. But there's potential for redemption, for him to get better, right? Just And, and these kind of characters truly have the most to shine because of the position they're in in the beginning and how much they can be corrected and have like a growth redemption arc. For sure that could happen. That's going to be a hot take, but if you know Heinkel's backstory, you know that he's actually, he just doesn't deserve it. If we talk about- So it sounds like Heinkel is not the one that planned for Felt kidnapping 15 years ago, which distracted the sword demon against the subjugation of the White Whale, and therefore Teresa Astria was, you know, left alone and quote-unquote died by Reinhardt, right? So it sounds like Heinkel is not the mastermind puppeteering it. Is it simply a coincidental event? Is Pandora behind it? Who could have, you know, uh, manipulated this event from happening? Or maybe it was just coincidence. About suffering when it comes to ReZero, we all talk about Subaru's suffering, but Heinkel is one of the most, you know, he's one of the saddest characters. Heinkel okay. absolutely gets dominant. Does he deserve it though? Just because he's suffering, I don't really care. But if he deserves this shit and he's getting suffering, then I'm going to laugh at him. If it's a character that wants to do better but continues to suffer, then I'm going to feel bad. Right now, I feel like I'm just going to laugh at him. ...for his pretty much entire life. So I actually do feel bad for Heinkel. Yes, he's a bit of a dick, but, you know, he does have some redeeming qualities to him. And I look forward to seeing his character progression right. over the course of uh, season uh, three of the anime. I also like the Subaru and Julius's interactions. This interaction just makes no sense to me other than Subaru and like their relationship of how they're still not friends after everything we've gone through. Tapia is really making it clear that Subaru is very averse to Julius, whether it be due to their first impressions and him being a super pretty boy and being chivalrous and Subaru just hating that shit. But it's just crazy how 
they're close, but they're not close. The ultimate Sundere here, Subaru, always pushing my Julius, but at the same time, giving him really good advice about, hey, you are literally shielding your heart with your armor. Who cares about being like the most knightly knight possible? Your true heart can't say what you want to say. So instead, you have an idiot like me that's saying all these self-righteous indignations in behalf of everybody. But maybe you should just be Yuli, bro. Put the fucking armor down. Just be Yuli. Um, I do feel like Julius is becoming more human. I know that sounds a bit weird, but as to... No, no, for sure. More human as in, you know, the facade is this perfect chivalrous knight that is so professional and mm, gentle and... You know, has a lot of these mannerisms, but at the end of the day, you can't really say what you want to say. And that's what a human is, right? He is prevented. He's like a machine trying to beat his perfect knight. But maybe you should just like lean into what you're really feeling. Subaru states is this idea that Julius is playing this sort of role of being a knight. And I like Julius's interactions with Subaru. And Julius is sort of taking off that armor and becoming a bit more human and showing his emotions a bit more. So I do like the Subaru and Julius dynamic, especially when Julius was, you know, beating the hell out of Subaru in season one. So it's for good reason, which he sacrificed his own career to take the heat off of Subaru to make Julius look like the bad guy and Subaru not as bad, which is dubs for Julius. It's good to see that they have sort of become good friends in a way, even though they both won't admit it. Yeah. They're both Sundarays in a way. Quite possibly, apart from the ending sequence, one of the best scenes, if not the best scene, was the interaction between Garfield and Elsa. This is, of course, new to the light novel and anime. It was not in the web novel, so it's really good to see Elsa. I see a disgruntled chatter that despises ReZero and is still molding that I'm still covering ReZero after two months. I'm not gonna change for you. You're just gonna have to accept it or leave. I appreciate the fan art that you created for me on Twitter, but if you're just gonna do this shit, what the fuck are you doing, huh? So here, and we see the sort of side effects of Garfield uh, killing and murdering Elsa. Yeah. And this idea that Garfield wants to be this strong individual, but he essentially survived by pure dumb luck. And that's, of course, going to... Nah, it's not pure dumb luck. There was a threshold of how much the livestock, you know, Elsa had built up. Like, there wasn't an infinite amount of resurrections, right? Plus, Elsa kind of wanted to die. She knew that Garfield could kill her. And there was this look in her eye where she accepted her death. Could you say that that part was the lucky part? Maybe. But I feel like this dialogue, this monologue, is a very unfair way that is being presented to Garfield to make him despise himself to make him despise his lack of strength compared to Reinhardt. It's that's amazing how Garfield right now is basically the main character of a battle shonen, and he's having this arc of internal struggles with this like inner-tailed beast or the inner hollow like fucking Naruto or Ichigo. I'm all for it. He at his character. By the way, what I noticed is, have you noticed that Elsa's breast? Yeah, the breast size are bigger, but I don't like this new face. It makes her look more childish and more baby-like. I liked Elsa when she was like season 1, season 2 style. That was perfect, Elsa. So somehow even large. This camera angle was crazy. Like, I, I have no idea what they're doing here. Like, this is happening with Amelia as well, but oh my god, look on screen. Like, t tell me that, what is going on here? But anyways, um, Garfield was not a simp, so he just tries to fight her, and... I do like this scene, the the coloring, the shading, everything's red. It looks amazing. And then the second Elsa disappears, everything goes back to normal. So it's really nice. I like the sunset aesthetic. Moving to the final scene. The final scene was amazing. Again, mm. no matter how many times I watch this scene, it's absolutely phenomenal. The cinematography when Sirius is up on the tower is exceptional. Yeah. And I rewatched this multiple times last night too, and the more I re like, yes, it was cinema. Everything about it was amazing. But if you actually listen to her dialogue, bro, she milked like five minutes of dialogue without saying fucking anything. Like straight up, R watch that scene again. She says fucking nothing. This is what she says over and over. Oh, can I have your attention, please? Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, taking your busy time out of your day. Can I have your attention? Oh, I'll have your attention. Thank you. Wow. Uh, three of you are very mad, but I promise I'll make this really quick. Oh, you have a question? Okay. Oh, you want me to hurry up? Okay. All right. I have your attention now. Thank you. That, that's it. That's literally it. Just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm sorry. And then she brings out the kid by the time you're already in this trance-like state. Then she does, she, she, then she just makes fun of the kid and everyone's like, woohoo, this is so fun.
honestly I'm, i can't wait to watch more is it's truly a different medium when you see the light novel and the web novel being brought to animation is exceptional just look at the cinematography look at the shots look at the composition mm -hmm. look at it listen to the music it's phenomenal and again i do think re-zero season three will be you know what i fucking hate about anime reviewers and no i'm not calling out him right now no i'm not starting to try any drama and i'm not trying to point out a flaw with anime reviewers no none of that i'm a lazy fucking reactor that depends on content like this to then react to but one of the things that i despise is how people have nothing to say about the actual show or the lore itself and it's just the production value being glazed over and over again which is not what's happening right now no I'm talking about there's videos where it's like a five minute video and four minutes is this oh my god the soundtrack the visuals the cinematography it's just like bro shut the fuck up and talk about the anime what are you doing you know are you here to glaze the fucking infrastructure and the logistics of the anime studio or are you here to talk about the story man it's just like there's a lot I've noticed where sometimes people got nothing to say about the show and they just fucking talk about the fucking production value be anime of the year 2024 definitely i think he's gonna be out mm. every single anime yeah anime of the year and here's the well it could be anime of the year for this year and next year because it's gonna like v season 3 38 episodes right eight episodes in october eight oct episodes in february 16 episodes uh, 22 then gonna be for arc 6 who knows when that's gonna happen like this shit could go fucking back to back to back who knows to me this will be anime of the year for me simply because of the bias right i am just a rezero glazer biggest fanboy this is my favorite isekai if not anime at this point in time so i have a huge bias to this that's why i'm just saying it but i still think that like the production value truly is amazing and the story is phenomenal and it being contested for anime of the year i don't think is bullshit i think there's a valid reason for it even if i and, you know, placing it on such a high pedestal simply due to my bias for this show. Remember, remember solo leveling, guys? <laughs> remember motherfuckers in solo in January, nine months ago, January solo leveling area? It's gonna be anime of the year! Anime of the year, guys! Everyone says the same shit when a new hype show shows up, right? They always glaze. It's fucking beginning of the year and motherfuckers are just licking solo leveling Song Jung Moo's asshole. It's like, oh, it's going to be the peak. It's just because, you know, YouTube stuff. You just want to glaze and make people feel good, right? I mean, Come on. And definitely every single isekai. ReZero absolutely dumpsters and buries Mishoko Tensei and all of those <laughs> trash harem isekai that come out in I see why he has some haters. Mishoko Tensei moves. He, he really had to throw that in at the end, huh? <laughs> what I like to... I, I don't like to actively shit on series when I'm literally watching. I'll try to make objective comparisons and beyond that there's nothing. But he really threw the dagger there. <laughs> there is no reason to bring in Mushoku Tensei at the end. <laughs> but he really was like, nah, nah. Fuck Rudeus. Fuck Mushoku Tensei Tars. <laughs> Cry about it. Every single season. Peak Zero is finally back. Yes, sir. Please go check out Mr. Jake's channel. Like the video if you did, sub to his channel if you'd like to, and I will see you next time.